my, my, my own business, there's a difference in the quality of tools. The, the only thing that I'm, uh, like chainsaws and the pole saws and certain things like that, it's hard to bid on them, bid on them also because we have, a, we have like, I'm gonna say seven or eight chainsaws and we have a few pole saws. Um, I've been dealing with the, the local businesses because they're easier to get the parts to. And I mean, my, my motto is Kent first, Putnam County second, New York State third. So I try to keep everything local. And as long as it's, you know, if I'm gonna save $50, but I have to send the guy up to Columbia County to get it, I'm gonna buy it in Kent. Second, and an unrelated question really quick. Uh, you mentioned that the North Horse Pound Road was an expensive project. Did we have, I don't remember seeing, did we have any specific subcontractors and material men that overran the normal bidding thing? Did we bid out for no. the materials and services, or was everybody under the threshold? The, the only, I had one in, uh, independent contractor, and I had to rent a, a 22 ton excavator to, to lift the pipe and everything, and I had my three prices on that. Okay. And when, what I've been trying to do, when the vouchers come to you guys, I'm trying to write. The, the name, the only, the only thing I failed to do with this was when we did the emergency renovations and I, I have a book where I put down the different contractors like, like in, in, the, in the town garage, um, the electrician, it's not sensible for me to get a new electrician every time because they have to come in and figure out what the guy did before them. So for, for a capital project or something like that, we need to get three prices. But, but um, I, I did get price, other prices anyway, from, and I'm trying to write them on the vouchers, and I do owe you a few um, of those uh, contractors that I didn't get to you back in March or whatever, but I, I have a, a book of the guys that did it. And I try to get, um, because of the prevailing wage law, I try to get guys locally that live in Kent first, like I said, Kent, Putnam County, New York State, that work by themselves because then they don't have any employees and they, we do not have to listen to the prevailing wage. Which to me, I used to do a lot of work in my own business for the high schools and the county and actually I did, a, I did the wall in the library before I got elected here. And um, when they started enforcing that prevailing wage law, a job that would cost $5,000 not cost $10,000 because of that. And that's something that we should really get on to our state representatives about because they, they um, Made, they enforce that law, and you're giving the, the local little contractors, we're cutting them out of the loop and they're paying taxes in our towns. But that's something that I always thought the, uh, our, our assembly people and our, st our state senators should really repeal for, uh, they should, like Mike, I appreciate when you introduced the uh, $8,000 threshold for, for myself, that we should have a law for local jobs for, for, our, for our public buildings. I don't know, a $50,000 threshold because it's costing us a lot more money to get simple jobs done. And everybody's always, you know, it's a pain in the ass, so. You're on TV. You're on I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All back up. Um, the next item on the workshop is, um, there were two openings in the Lake Carmel Sanitation Department, and we, um, one for a labor and one for an MEO, we posted both of those um, as we're required to do um, internally for five days, and we had applicants for both of those positions, one from the Highway Department and one from the Recreation Department. Um, so there were lateral transfers which don't result in any pay increases. Um, and so we put that on just to announce it at the workshop and to um, approve those um, changes in department retroactively to September 11th. Um, the next item on the agenda is the recreation labor position vacancy. Because um, somebody from recreation, uh, the labor, one of the laborers from recreation was the only um, in-house applicant um, for the um, labor position at Highway, he got it, which opens up a labor position at the recreation department. Um, we posted that 
position internally and had, we had applicants, but they weren't current employees of the town. So we need to open that up to the public. Um, and so the only issue we really have to discuss is, um, you know, it is an opening and it's something that the Director of Recreation is very anxious to fill. I had spoken um, to Putnam County personnel. There's no specific length of time that we have to advertise that position for. Um, it's already posted on the bulletin board, but we're gonna put an ad in the paper. So I'd like just some discussion. We'd like this position as filled as soon as possible. The earliest it can go into the paper is next Monday, which is October 6th. So I'd like for the board maybe to, um, you know, agree on a date to um, have the applications in by. 10 days, so usually it's 10 days, yeah, right? Yeah, usually if you want to do it like the Friday before your 21st meeting, if you advertise next week. And we'll act on the 21st. Act on the 21st? Or the 7th? No. Who's going to do the interviews? I don't know. Does Lou and Jeff want to do Who's Lou's liaison? Bill and Paul. That's how we use it. Okay. So then why don't we have the applications due the Friday before the meeting right. so that we have an opportunity to um, speak with applicants? That would be, what's that, the 17th? Mm -hmm. Okay. That would be Friday the 17th okay. of October. By the way, uh, the Parks Department, it's a labor in the town Parks Department, Recreation Parks Department, and uh, right now they're working on a, I would say, a capital project. They have skinned the... Uh, uh, dugout field at Ryan's Park, and uh, <coughs> so they weren't planning on this gentleman leaving, so uh, it's important that this position um, gets done so we don't lose the season for next year. Um, the next item on the agenda um, I'd like to table for now, and I, yeah, it's, it's not in the meeting portion. I think um, we need to do a little more research on this um, before we go ahead and, and discuss it. Okay. Um, and again, the um, item six, uh, kind of new information came up um, this afternoon and we're going to actually table this and I'm gonna put this on for um, next week's meeting. The change in the in town employee handbook, uh, section 807. The section 807 deals with the medical insurance buyout. Currently, um, full-time employees or elected officials, I have to say the first time I read it, I thought it meant full-time elected officials, um, are eligible for medical insurance coverage um, through the town and may receive a cash buyout in lieu of receiving medical insurance benefits. The um, part-time employees of the town, other than elected officials, are not eligible for medical benefits. Um, I think that it would be a good move on the town's part to um, even the playing field that full that only full-time employees of the town, whether elected or um, appointed, should be eligible for medical insurance, but that part-time employees, whether they're elected officials or not, should not be eligible for medical insurance or the buyout. Um, medical insurance for a family costs approximately $21,000, which you know, is in, in excess of town board member salaries um, and approximates the, the, uh, the salaries of certain other elected officials. So I, you know, I think this would be a great savings to the town. Currently, no town board member takes the medical insurance um, and three members take the buyout. And I have been advised that in order to change this, we could not do it for this, you know, anybody in this term. So anybody that has the buyout, that is an elected official, 
this wouldn't come into effect until the, um, at all during this term, but with, you know, if they're reelected or for new um, part-time elected officials, it would take um, effect. And I would ask that, you know, I'm, I'm looking to eliminate not only the health insurance, but also the buyout. And I have also been advised that even though we can't, um, we can't make it mandatory, um, even, if, even if this section was changed, that someone in office now waive the coverage, I would ask that, um, that those, you know, that board members would do so. Can we have some discussion? I mean, I don't, I don't take the health care, and um, so, you know, if we want to get rid of the additional compensation for not taking it, that's fine with me. I mean, we're not taking a vote. This is something to explore, but I, um, you know, it, the medical insurance buyout affects people less. The problem is you can't have the buyout without making people eligible for health care. And to, you know, if we had a board, I mean, right now I don't take the um, insurance and I don't get the buyout, um, but I'm entitled to, you know, full family medical insurance. If, if all five members of this board were to, not maybe this board in particular, but any board, were to take the medical insurance, it would be, what, you know, over $100,000 for family. And um, I think that that's, you know, that's a perk that weighs heavily on the um, residents of the town. Um, I'm going to need more information on this and the impact of not only the town board members, but like the judges and uh, if there's any other impact that I'm, I'm just trying to digest this right now. I don't well, know if there was there anything in writing that you sent us on this? I sent the section, the medical okay. buyout section. But that's what's here, right? That's what's here. Okay. I just got Yeah. Okay. Currently, I mean, I sent an email around too, kind of stating my, my, you know, position about this. I think it's, um, you know, a great savings to the town. And it, like I said, it wouldn't affect people that are already in office. So people that are, that are here already wouldn't be losing anything. They could opt to waive it, like, you know, Paul said he would opt to waive the buyout. Um, but it would only start at the, either the start of that person's next term or, you know, whoever knew mm -hmm. came in. Yeah, I don't take advantage of the buyout, uh, but I, I would like more information to digest. And if there's any other impact that I'm not aware of, uh, so if we're, we're going to study this, uh, I'd be happy to discuss it, you know, further as I get more information. Okay. Okay. Want to say anything? No, I'd like more time on this. Okay. Um, yeah, I do. I know how I feel about mm -hmm. it, and um, <clears throat> I really would like to kind of. We've had a lot to uh, <laughs> deal with the last huh? couple of weeks, so. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm asking for more time to think about this and to maybe get more information. Uh, right at this moment, I'm not. Um, in favor of doing without medical insurance. I think that was an incentive for people who were thinking of running for office. Um, there was reasons for it, and it came down from the state and the state comptroller that towns could offer this, and we have offered this for a number of years. Um, and I've got some questions about it, pro and con, and I want some more time. Yeah, I mean, my only position is that, you know, when, when you're not offering it to regular part-time employees, and I understand, you know, that it is a nice benefit, but um, I wouldn't want that to be a reason that people ran for office that they're going to get medical coverage. And, um, you know, when the cost of medical coverage exceeds your salary, it seems that, that that's kind of time to, to rethink the benefit of doing that.